In this video, we're going to have a look at the get method of the Python dictionary class, which will also involve looking at exceptions in the Python language. Let's consider this computer program here and its runtime. The first line that we see here will create an instance of the dictionary class and this instance will be bound to this name and it will have three items, three key value pairs. Now this line will actually print the value associated with the key UK. Now this key identifies this key value pair consequently london will be printed at the output as we can see here on this line we have another print statement and we can see that what we're trying to print is something associated with this object that has the key spain now if you look at the key value pairs in capitals you can see that there is nothing there that has the key of spain now when this line tries to execute it cannot find the key spain so what will happen is what you see in the runtime here you get an error occurring the program has effectively crashed because it cannot find the key Spain in the instance of the dictionary class. And here you can see that it says key error and it tells you the key error involves Spain. In other words, it can't find Spain. So if it can't find Spain, it certainly can't print it. So as you can see, the program crashes. So this line worked and this line didn't work. When a computer program executes, you can expect errors. For example, if you're inputting data and the data that you input results somewhere in your program in a variable being divided by zero, then you divide anything by zero, you'll often heard said that it will generate infinity. Well, it will generate not a number, but the point is a computer program cannot store infinity nothing can so the consequence is that an error will occur and the error is being due to the data throwing up a divide by zero another kind of error could be if you were reading a file from a portable disk and the program works happily when the disk is in place but let's just say the user accidentally unplugs the portable disk and when the program attempts to read the file well, it's not there because the hardware has been removed. Now, this will throw an error, and you have to take account of errors. So, in this particular case, when this line attempted to print what was associated with the key Spain, and it was not there, we got this here. It's telling us it's a key error, and it's telling us what caused the key error, and we can see it was the fact that Spain was not in the dictionary. Within Python, a mechanism exists that will deal with errors, and this mechanism uses these words here, try and accept. Now, this accept is an abbreviation for exception and you can see we have a colon here and here so it's very similar to other constructs where the colon appears you put in this area code that you suspect may cause an error to occur so for example if you are manipulating data and you felt there was a risk of dividing by zero then you would put the code in this area or if you were reading a file and you suspected that somebody might accidentally remove the portable disk drive that contained the file you would put that code here or in the case of the program we're looking at here if you suspected somebody might go and look for a key that doesn't exist in the dictionary you put that code here now if during the execution of the code that is in this area an error does occur then you put here the code that will gracefully deal with that error and what i mean by that here will be something that says oh i'm sorry you've just attempted to read the file and the file is currently not available or you could put here oh you've just tried to divide by zero that's not allowed or i'm afraid that key is not available in the dictionary and if you use this the program won't crash in other words the code here works and if all's well and good this code here will not execute. However, if an error occurs when the code here is executing, then you will execute this code, which will stop the program crashing and will give feedback to the user as to what the problem was. Let's now consider this computer program 
and its runtime. If we look at the first line, we can see we're creating a dictionary, and the dictionary has three key value pairs, and it's exactly the same as the dictionary we looked at earlier in this video. And if you look here, you can see we have the try exception mechanism. These two statements I've put indented for, which tells us that they're part of the try bit of the mechanism, and I'm suspecting, therefore, that these may throw up an error. Now, we know from the work we've just done in the video that this is going to cause an error because Spain is not a key within the dictionary. So, we have to make arrangements, and the arrangement we make is here. You see, this statement is indented for, but it comes after this, and this is the exception bit, and we're expecting the error to be a key error. And you can see the colons have been put in both places as appropriate. So the program does the following. This is the dictionary that's created. We put here accessing that dictionary in the assumption that an error may occur. And in this particular area, we put what we want to happen when an error does occur when we try and execute this bit of code. And this area here is allowing us to gracefully suggest to the user what the problem is without the program actually crashing. So let's look at this computer program executing one line at a time. This executes to produce the dictionary. The next line to execute is this one here, which is within the try bit. And we can see that it's asking us to print what's associated with the key UK. And we can see here that that is London. Consequently, the output will print London as we can see. We then move on to actually execute this line where we're attempting to print what's associated with the key Spain. But of course, if you look here, Spain is not in the dictionary. So an error occurs. The consequence of the error occurring is that this line will now execute. And this line comes after this particular exception clause. And the output will be you have tried to access an item that does not exist in the dictionary. Let's say we still wanted to actually print the value associated with a particular key, but we didn't want to get involved in this try exception mechanism. Well, we can do that by using a method that is associated with the dictionary class, and that method is the get method. And we can show that in this program here. On this line, we're creating the same dictionary, and on this line here, what's happening, I'm saying I want to go to this object, I want to invoke this method, and I'm passing in the key UK. And of course, that key will gain access to this item, and London will be selected. So when we look at the runtime, what we will get is this message causing London to be returned, and we will then print London to the output. Now on this line, you can see I've got the message again, but this time I am actually passing in the key of Spain. And we know this key does not exist in the dictionary. But what the get method will do, it will not throw an exception. As we've seen in the previous examples in this video, it will say, right, well, I haven't got the key. So it returns the following. It returns none and none gets printed by the print statement. Let's consider this dictionary that we've been looking at throughout this particular video. And we know that this is going to create an instance of the dictionary class that we can see here. And of course, the instance when it's created, we can see appearing in the execution space. And we can see that this instance takes up all of the methods and has at its core in the green area, the three items that were shown in the code. Now, what I'm interested in now is this particular program statement here, where this is a message to the object, and the message is going to invoke the get method. So there we can see the actual message, and it's going to invoke this particular method here. Now, what this method will do, it'll have a look at the items. In particular, it'll have a look at the keys, and it'll see it's got UK. So it will say, yes, I've got that. So I'll return London. And London gets returned, and it is returned to this position. And of course, then this will print London, and we'll see the runtime will be, as you can see, down here. 
let's go with this program statement again and we can see that we end up with this particular object in the execution space I now want to have a look at this program statement here and you can see that we have a message and that message is going to be sent to the object and we can show that in the diagram here now what this will do it will actually invoke this particular method here and this method will look and see that the key is Spain and will know from the items that Spain is not one of the key values consequently the code inside this particular get method will know to generate this value of none the method get will then return the value of none as you can see in the diagram and this particular value will be sent to this position the position of where the actual message was sent and you can see it inside the print statement the consequence is that the runtime will look as it is down here here you can see a program statement that I've extracted from one of the programs we've looked at in this video and you can see that I'm attempting to print what's associated with this particular key in the object capitals where capitals is an instance of the dictionary class now we know Spain is not there in the programs we've been looking at so under these conditions what will happen because the key is not there an exception is going to be raised of course as a program we have to kind of anticipate that this might happen and we have to include a try exception mechanism to actually report back to the user look this particular key isn't in the dictionary in other words we try and make sure that the program doesn't crash and we gracefully report that there's a problem trying to access this particular key because it doesn't exist in the dictionary let's now compare this particular statement with the following statement here what we can see inside the print is this message here and this particular message is sending a message to this object and we're going to invoke this method and we're going to try and get whatever's associated with this key here which is Spain and again we know Spain is not in the dictionary now the consequence of using this method is we're not going to have an exception raised because this method will say well if I can't find what's in the dictionary it'll return none so here we can see key not there returns none Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.